Hi, uh, my name is Dean Bragonier. I am the executive dyslexic and founder of an organization called Notice Ability. I was uh, introduced to Kids in the House after I read an incredibly compelling article in the Huffington Post written by Kids in the House founder, Leanna Green. And she articulated in ways that I had never heard before uh, her experience with dyslexia, which is something that she and I share together. And I was so compelled by her article that I reached out to her and uh, here I am. We, we have uh, bonded over our common learning difference, if you will, and share a very optimistic strength-based perception of dyslexia in general. So I am uh, doing my first video blog as opposed to written blog uh, just because uh, writing is a fairly laborious process for me and spell check just gets exhausted so I was going to give it a day off and um, speak to you on film. I, I uh, started an organization very recently which creates strength-based curricula for middle school students with dyslexia. Very often the case is certainly in mine uh, when students enter school and the first benchmark of their intelligence is how quickly they learn how to read and we fail miserably, it takes a pretty heavy toll on our self-esteem. Uh, very often that's compounded by hazing and bullying and sometimes very discouraging feedback from teachers and, and worst case scenario parents. Um, what I have uh, discovered about my dyslexia is that while reading is a bear, dyslexia carries with it some incredible superpowers that come from uh, the way our minds operate. And I, about three years ago, was given a book, uh, which is rich in irony, right? The biggest backhanded compliment you can give a dyslexic is like, here, here's a gift, here's a book. Like, thanks, but no thanks. But anyway, I was given this book called The Dyslexic Advantage. And after three years of it sitting on my shelf, I blew off the dust and, and opened it up and I found myself. Um, this is a book written by a pair of neuropsychologists uh, who have deconstructed the dyslexic mind and shown how the construction actually translates to a set of cognitive skills that enable us to, may, uh, to be outliers in certain vocational paths. Uh, I've been uh, in the nonprofit space for many, many years and a little light bulb went off in my mind. I said, you know, we're looking at horrific statistics for dyslexic students. 35% attrition rates and upwards of 70% of all juvenile delinquents have dyslexia and 60% of kids involved in drug and alcohol abuse have dyslexia. But on the flip side, we've got these incredible numbers in terms of 35% of all entrepreneurs and 40% of all self-made millionaires or 50% of all NASA employees also being dyslexic. So we need to empower these kids, expose them to what I eventually discovered later in life were these cognitive advantages. So I went to uh, Harvard University and I went to Tufts University and I went to a dyslexic specific school called the Carroll School K-8 through in uh, Massachusetts and I said look what I want to do is I want to build a series of curricula that expose young dyslexics to pre-vocational training, meaning preparation for certain career paths that's distilled to an age-appropriate level, middle school. And within those curricula, I want to embed the executive functioning and the social-emotional learning that's mandatory for dyslexics to succeed in school. But more importantly, I want to allow them to see what makes their minds so unique and allow them not an external source, but I'll allow them to switch, you know, flip that switch internally and have that light bulb go off and say, wow, you know, yeah, I've got difficulty reading, but I'm not stupid. To the contrary, I've got an incredible ability to be one of four things, and they're certainly not constricted to these four topics, but entrepreneurs, engineers, architects, and artists. So let's deliver this 
utilizing technology. For the first time in history, I can teach a lesson plan through video, through audio, through a graphic or pictorial lesson plan, so that we take that barrier to entry, which is text, and toss it out the window and access or, or, or make available to dyslexic all of the same content just through different mediums. And so the process is this. I'm building these e-learning curricula and it will have a blended delivery so that students on an IEP in public schools or kids in youth serving organizations after school will be able to learn online the lesson plans and then come into the bricks and mortar classroom and actually build projects in teams that produce tangible results. So if it's entrepreneurship, they're creating a prototype and a business plan for something that they've come up with. And my hunch, based on my experience, is that when you expose a dyslexic who is ravenous for positive reinforcement to something that they are really, really good at, they will be less inclined to make those bad decisions, drugs, alcohol, gang involvement, etc., and see that there is actually not only a light, but a big blazing fire at the end of the tunnel here, and that they're gonna pursue that uh, with uh, vigor and enthusiasm. So that's why I started Noticeability, is to create these programs. Now, I have got the wonderful benefit of working with Kids in the House as a video blogger to provide you with 27 video blogs of a ridiculous physical feat I'm about to attempt in order to raise money and exposure for noticeability. I am going to be swimming around the island of Martha's Vineyard in Massachusetts. This swim, which is 50 miles, conservatively, will take approximately 27 legs. And each one of those legs will be documented by a young high school videographer that I'm working with and will feature not only elements of the swim, but sort of a Q&A with a, notice, uh, a notable dyslexic, okay, ranging from the Martha's Vineyard High School student with dyslexia who's graduated from high school and is going to college or famous dyslexics like Carly Simon. And the idea is that by posting these videos, not only will I drum up a um, sort of a community of dyslexics across the country, you know, I don't know, the world, I mean, that's grandiose, but who knows? And we'll start creating a dialogue around the benefits of dyslexia. So, I am going to uh, submit those video blogs to my Kids in the House uh, blogger profile. And I uh, would love your support. May it be financial resources, wonderful. If not, reposting, tweeting, liking, whatever you can do on social media would be incredibly advantageous. But we are a massive population. One in five people is dyslexic. We have our golden children, right? We've got the Charles Schwab's and the Richard Branson's and the John Lennon's and the Pablo Picasso's and the Leonardo da Vinci's and I could go on and on and on, but the reality is that we need to reach those young dyslexics who, like me, uh, or like I used to be, believed that we were somehow broken or dysfunctional. And we need to create a community that supports these individuals and gives them the resources to recognize their true brilliance. So, my hope is that I haven't lost you, because I'm talking so long, but uh, that you will join me in this journey. I start July 11th, and I'm scheduled to finish August 16th, so please uh, check it out. You can find me here. You can also find me uh, on my website, which is www.noticeability. So I spell it N-O-T-I-C-E, ability, A-B-I-L-I-T-Y dot org. Of course, it's a double entendre. If you notice my ability, you see no disability, right? Uh, you can also see, uh, you can also follow us on, on, on Facebook, which is Noticeability USA. 
uh, on Twitter, Noticeability LD, and on Instagram, Straight Up Noticeability. All right. I hope you join me in this. Thanks so much, and thanks so much to kids in the house. <laughs>